Welcome back to another strategy lesson. In today's video, we're going to learn more about preflop cold calling for Potlim in Omaha. This video will focus primarily on three things. We're going to talk about the rake structure and why the rake structure has a huge impact on your cold call frequency. We will also cover why positional awareness is key in understanding how to produce a win rate when cold calling from various positions. And third, we're going to look into three bed and squeezing ranges and their impact on your cold call range. But let's start off by first of all defining what cold calling actually means. In this example, we are six handed and there's an early position razor. The three positions next to early position, in this case, middle position, cutoff and button are considered cold calling positions. So if those players were to call the initial razor, this would be defined a cold call. And the reason we call it a cold call is because they have no money invested so far. If the small blind or the big blind call the initial raise, that would be considered a defend. One of the most overlooked adjustments is to not take into account the rake structure you're playing in and making the appropriate adjustment. Here's some examples. Let's say we are cold calling from the button versus the cutoff, or at least we are considering it, and we are looking at two fastly different environments. On the left-hand side, we are looking at a PLO 50 table on GG Poker, and on the right-hand side, we are comparing that with a PLO 5000 table on PokerStars. Now the rake structures when playing GTO will come out fastly different. On the left-hand side on PLO50 on GG, you will end up paying about 11.5 big blinds over 100. And on the right-hand side, you will end up paying about 0.6 big blinds per 100. So we end up paying a lot less rake on the right-hand side, and that has a huge impact on the profitability of hands we can call with. So if you look at an example like Ace-8-7-3 double suited, this hand is a fold on GG Poker PLO50, at least at equilibrium, and the EV difference can tell us how much of a mistake it would be to call this hand on the button. In this case, calling would cost us about 0.04 big blinds per hand or four big blinds per hundred. So this hand can be considered a fringe hand that you might want to add into your co-calling range against a weaker opponent, but at equilibrium would be a fault. And then on the right hand side, the exact same hand, Ace873, would now be a call given that the rake is a lot lower and it's going to show a profit of 0.17 big blinds or 17 big blinds over 100. So it's a really good example to illustrate the point that when the rake is lower, you can call a lot more hands and you want to train and study with the right rake structure preflop to understand what hands you can profitably call. But it also tells us a bit more than that. It also shows us through the EV difference feature what hands are fringe hands and can be added against weaker opponents in situations where we want to expand our range. If we compare the global frequencies on the button against the cutoff RFI, on PLO50 on GG, we come out at 10%. Comparing this with PLO5000 on stars, we double the frequency and we come out at 20%. So this is, illustrates again how important it is to work with the right preflop sims when you're studying for the environment you're in. And that's what we will do right now by jumping into PLO Trainer and reviewing how we co-call on the button under different rake circumstances and how to spot fringe hands that could be added against the right opponent. In PLO Trainer, we're going to compare two key profiles. The first one will be the 6-max PokerStar Sim on PLO 5000 at 100 big blind stack depth. Cut off open raises and we sit on the button and our co-call -call frequency here is 20%. We'll compare this Sim with the GG Poker Sim between PLO 50 and 200, which share the same rate profile in the same note. So in this case, we cold call 10.3% of the time. So we will jump back into the PLO 5K profile and then generate a training by clicking the training button. And now we are going through hands. We are on the button facing a cutoff RFI at the lower rake structure. And if we do identify a fringe hand, we're going to compare it with the higher rake structure to understand the differences. So Ace King Jack 4 here, relatively straightforward call. This hand will earn us 0.59 big blinds per hand or 59 big blinds per hundred. If we click on the hand, it copies it to the clipboard and we can just plug it right here into the syntax bar on PLO 50 on GG. And what we will find here is how this hand prefers to play, which in this case would be calling. You can remove these options for a moment. The EV would be 30 big blinds a hundred, comparing this once again with the lower rake structure where we double the EV at about 60 big blinds per hundred given the lower rake. And we can also see how much the EV difference would be choosing the second best option. So in this case, we are making a five big blinds per hundred uh, improvement by not choosing the second best option. 
Now, if you're unsure what it is, in this case, it would be three betting, you can also hide the 0% combos and it shows you the win rates of all the other options that are lower EV and therefore not chosen or displayed in the beginning. So three betting with ace, king, jack, four at PLO 50 on GG would net us 24 big blinds per 100, calling 30 and folding is always zero EV as long as you didn't put chips into the middle. So hiding this once again, this plays that this hand is a profitable call on either stake. Ace, king, 10, seven, low suit, certainly a hand that doesn't show a lot of profit. We're gonna go ahead and fold. And now we can see that this hand at the lowest rake structure where we almost pay no rake actually does show a marginal profit finding a cold call here of five big blinds per hundred. So that already should tell us that this hand is very unlikely to be profitable at a higher rake structure. And in fact, we can see this hand now folding on PLO 50. Using the EV difference feature, we once again will learn more about the difference. There are five big blinds over 100 will be the difference between folding and calling. And that's a really good way to learn what fringe hands are. So fringe hands are hands that show a marginal profit or a marginal loss rate. And those are the first hands you want to expand into when you face a player you want to play against. So let's say the cutoff open race is a much wider range, is a recreational player, makes a bunch of mistakes post-flop, and basically is a player you have a large edge on, then this could be a reasonable hand to expand on even if the rake structure you're in doesn't incentivize you to do so at equilibrium. Next hand here is ace 10, 10, eight. We're also gonna go ahead and make the call. This hand would actually play better as a three bet. Now, one thing you will notice is that the three bet frequency, the global three bet frequency on the button is actually higher when you go down in stakes or when you go up in rake. So in the 5K example, we are three betting 7.5% of the time. And in the 550 example on GG, our global frequency for three betting is going to be 8.7. So it's a bit higher from 7.5 to 8.7. And that is for two reasons. One, calling is just generally speaking less incentivized given that you pay more rake once you see the flop. And secondary, when you three bet, in theory, you should have more fold equity at the higher rake structure because your opponent as well is less incentivized to call a three bet with a marginal hand. So if we tie it back to the fold frequency against a three bet, we three bet on the button and look at how often this player is going to fold, we will see at PLO 50 on GG, it is supposed to be 39.5%. So we have a decent chunk of fold equity and that makes more marginal, hand when a, marginal hands when a three bet. If you then compare this with this sim here at 5K, we're gonna exit the training for a moment and then simulate the scenario. So button three bets, it goes back to the cutoff. He is only supposed to fold about 20% versus around 40%. So again, that incentivizes the button player to three bet more aggressively. Now, obviously at lower stakes, depends on who you play against, you might actually not have more fold equity and that's something to take into account. And if you think your opponent is underfolding, it means that you probably wanna play more like at PLO 5K, where you three bet a little bit less. You just gotta be careful with the cold calls. As we already said, uh, your cold calling range will expand about two times as large when you pay less rake. 9754, so here we have two gaps, an eight is missing and a six is missing or here a six is missing, which is quite a bit. I'm gonna to choose to actually call this on this stake, but it should be really, really marginal. So we win about eight big blinds per hundred calling on 5K. And this will already tell us that on 50, this hand class will be much more marginal and will be a fold by default. So we're folding here, EV difference, three big blinds. It's a fringe hand, it's a reasonable hand to add on. Next hand, seven, six, five, three on the button. A certain hand we can call. 58, we don't need to look it up. It's a very clear call on any stake. And uh, by training this way, we become not only aware of binary right and wrong actions. So we not just learn that 7653 is a call or a fold, but we also start developing an understanding of what hands are really profitable and what hands are more optional or potentially losing against a very strong opponent. And that's the advantage of seeing EVs and seeing EV differences. Now, in this specific training, you're gonna be exposed to all the hands in our preflop range. So you will also see a bunch of hands that are actually not that interesting. And the way we can improve this training session is by setting an EV spread. So we can say we only wanna see hands that will lose 0.5 if they end up making an action. 
and we also want to see hands that maximally have an expected value of 0.5 as well. So we're not going to see all those really strong hands like aces, for example, uh, or double suited kings. We only want to see fringe hands. And by doing so, we're going to have a more difficult training, but an also more effective training. So here, jack eight, six, four, it's going to be a fold, minus 20, king 10, nine, seven, it's going to be a call. Actually, it prefers to three bet this hand, king 10, nine, seven, over calling. However, the EV difference between those two uh, options is actually really, really tiny. So 35 big blinds per 100 versus 36 big blinds per 100. So you can really go either way. But if you pay more rake and you have more fold equity, we can already identify or should identify that at PL of 50, this is a great hand to three bet. So plugging it in right here, we will see that uh, we definitely want to three bet. In this case, the EV difference isn't massive, but once again, it's very easy to understand that this hand should be three betting as well. Um, at the lower stake, and the EV difference is one big blind bigger. King Jack 7 6 double goes into the three bet range. Even though this hand looks enticing to call, and you will make money calling, if you pay attention to the EV differences here between calling and uh, three betting, it's actually really large, right? So, this is a hand class. If you end up making the call, uh, you should realize that you're missing out a lot of money by not aggressively three betting enough with hands like these. Here we have a fold, king 10, 9, 7 with a low suit, very different to the king high suit. We're going to make the fold. Ace, jack, 7, deuce, double suited. A lot of those double suited ace high hands are calling at lower rake structures and folding at higher rake structures. I think this hand might still be disconnected, too disconnected. We'll see. Now it is making a call, but only winning one big blind per 100. So once again, tying it back here to PLO 50, it's going to be a very clear cut fold, and it's going to be one of the most fringiest hands to call at a very low rake structure. A quick interruption to make you guys aware that PLO Trainer now offers free preflop solutions. You can access every node and train as many hands as you want in order to lay this very important first foundation, the foundation of preflop play in PLO. Head over to plomastermind.com and sign up for your free account. Another adjustment a lot of people miss out on is positional awareness. What is positional awareness? Imagine you have an early position raiser. Now against the exact same range, our cold call frequency can fastly differ dependent on our position and how many players are behind us. So the MP player in this example calls only 5%, the cutoff player 7%, and the button 11.4%. In this case, we are using a GG Poker PLO 500 to 2000 profile. Let's jump into some more examples in PLO Trainer and see how this is going to work out. So for these examples, we are using the PLO 500 to PLO 2000 solutions on GG. This is sort of a middle ground when it comes to the rake structure between all the different stakes. And the first scenario we're looking into is how we play on the button against an EP open. So this is the widest range. Going back to range, our frequency is 11.4%. Let's say we look at 5, 4, 3, 2, double, and we decide to make this call. We look at the EV once again, about 5 big bands, 100, and one good exercise here is to think about, would we call this hand in an earlier position as well? Again, we can copy it, and then we can look into the MP solution and the cutoff solution. We're going to start off with the cutoff solution. So I don't think this hand is going to find a call here. In this case, it would be a fold, and the EV difference would be about four big blinds 100. And then as we get further away from the button, we're going to end up losing more money, in this case, 14 big blinds 100. So we want to call this hand on the button, the 5-4-3 deuce, but we don't want to call this hand in an earlier seat. This is a good way to train and understand all three positions in one training. Obviously, a 6 9 8 is a, is a three bet. Queen, Jack, 7-5, double suited. Uh, hand that I would call on the button. Actually, it's going to be quite a large mistake at 18 big blinds per 100. So we're going to skip that and not look up the other positions. Ace, King, 10-7. It's a good one to look into, so certainly a profitable call on the button, but what is the earliest position we would call this hand in? Would we call an MP, for example, where we only have a 5% frequency, right? So we have a 5% frequency here. Will uh, Ace-King-10-7 make it in there? And I would say a lot of people would call this hand, but I think it probably is too weak given the disconnectivity. A lot of gaps between the uh, King-10-7 and we are also dominated very often by the open raising range. So let's have a look. We're going to flick this in. We indeed have a fold of 0 0.03. So it is certainly one of the fringe hands. 
Uh, what, one thing we can also do is to change the card slightly to see which variation we're going to be calling. For example, if we replace the 7 with a 9, then we're going to make this a very profitable call. So we're going to look into the middle, and 8 is also going to be a call. So we start learning more about the thresholds. Ace-King-10-8 is a call, and then Ace-King-10-9 is a call, obviously, but Ace-King-10-7 with a double gapper at the bottom is going to fold an MP. And once again, if we end up playing against a maniac that opens from under the gun and the name of the game is to isolate and play a lot more hands and we're facing a 40% RFI, then this hand, given its block of properties, could also be a good one to just add into our three betting range. So if we hide the 0% combos, we can actually see that the difference between calling and three betting is about nine big blinds per hundred, which I think is a reasonable frequency given the blocker properties to expand into if we do want to isolate against a very, very loose and aggressive recreational player from under the gun and add this into our three betting range, especially when you think about the fact that this hand doesn't make as much money anyway calling, so it doesn't benefit as much from getting other people involved, but it does actually play quite well in position against a very wide range. So up to the next hand, Ace, King, King, Five, Double, certainly a three bet. Would that change if we do uh, sit in MP? Well, let's have a look at the global frequencies of three betting to begin with. So we three bet 5.5% on the button. Delete here the cutoff. 5.4% in the cutoff. And then an MP, 5.2%. So really not much of a difference. The main difference here comes from how many hands we can profitably call. But the three betting range has a lot more to do with the open raising range and if we have good equity against it, more so than our position. Ace, queen, jack, four, here we're gonna fold. Ace, jack, 10, three, double. It's gonna be a three bet or a call. We're gonna go for call. Three betting is a little bit worse. And would we call this hand an EP or an MP more so? I certainly would. So this hand here shows clear profit, 29 big blends over 100, calling in MP. Easy fold, 10, 10, 9, 4, double. Depends on the rake structure with this hand. We're going to call here. It's going to net as one big blinds 100. We already know that we don't have to look at the other positions. We already know that it's going to be a fold in the cut of an MP. Ace, queen, 9, 6, double, certainly a call. Would we call this hand in MP? Uh, I would say with better suits for sure. But with the ace and the queen sharing the same suit at this rake structure, it might actually be a fold. It's actually pretty close. Okay, it will be a fold, and we're going to lose 13. So it's quite a decent, decently big mistake to call this hand under these rake conditions. And if we look up the other variations here, we use the double suited syntax, we'll find that the best version is actually choosing the 3-bet. So ace, queen, 9, 6 with the high suit ace and the queen don't share the same suit, uh, will be a three bet. So by exploring different positions and by finding slight adjustments to the opening hands, in this case, high suit, low suit, we learn so much more than just a binary yes or no, but we learn how to play in three positions, what the differences are, what fringe ends are, and uh, we can explore multiple nodes in one go that can benefit us so much more and contribute to our bottom line in a much bigger way than just training one spot with one hand at a time. And the last item we're gonna learn more about today in order to improve your cold calling strategy is to learn more about aggressively three betting and squeezing. A lot of people choose to call hands that actually should be three betting and would show more value three betting and we're going to jump straight into Pilot Trainer to explore what those hands could be. So the first note we're going to jump into will be button versus cutoff. This time, once again, we are in the middling profile. We're using PLO 500 to 2K on GG. Our 3-bet frequency is 8.5%. The first mistake people make is they are 3-betting big pairs too often. I'm not talking about aces, I'm talking more so about kings, queens, and jacks. So if we type in kings, queens, and jacks, into the syntax bar, and we also remove aces, we'll quickly find out that only 15.4% of those hands will choose to 3-bet. Most of those hands will choose to call or fold. On the right-hand side, the first thing we want to pay attention to is what is the pattern of those big pairs. And it's pretty easy to identify. All those hands here are double-suited. They have spades and hearts. You only see two callers. 
In the middle, you see three colors a lot more often. So here, King, King, Nine, Nine has hearts, spades, and diamonds. And then on the right-hand side, you can see a lot of rainbow combos. So Ace, Queen, Queen, Five here, for example, has four different colors. So visually, it's very easy to see what the pattern is when it comes to suitedness. On the right-hand side, there's another pattern emerging, which is the Ace. So a lot of those hands that are three bidding also contain an Ace. So what we can do now is we can head into our categories, which will help us to understand the broader picture much faster. I recommend to go into buckets of hands preflop to train and understand more about the game because we do have to sort through over 270,000 different combos in four card PLO and it's just going to be impossible to do that going hand by hand. So you want to bucket them and the way we do that is with categories. So for example here at the top we have unpaired double suited hands. 9.51% of all hands in PLO are unpaired and double suited and 28% of those hands will be three betting. Now what is the pattern of those unpaired hands? Well, if we have an ace, we are attributing 45% of the time. If our double suited hand is connected without an ace, 45% of the time. And if our hand doesn't have an ace and is not connected, then we are basically never three betting. So let's expand on the ace high hands. We have four different categories here. And you can see they fastly play different. We have a 92% frequency here on connected Broadway cards. We can just click this and have a look into how this looks. So on the right-hand side, you can see all these hands, ace, king, queen, eight, ace, king, jack, three, ace, king, queen, four. We basically have multiple Broadway cards that are connected, ace, king, jack, nine. The five is connected to the wheel. And the weakest hands of this category, this, the weakest, the bottom 6.7% are just going to be calling. We are looking at hands like ace, jack, ten, deuce with a low suit, the ten high suit. Uh, or we're looking at hands like ace queen 10 6 where we have a lot of gaps and a low suit as well but what really helps here is to identify patterns kind of quick so if our hand has a bunch of broadway cards with an ace and we're double suited we're going to three bet at an almost 100 percent frequency but then there's a big drop off between this category and the next one which is connected non-broadway right so here we are three betting only 54 percent and what happens here is we have no broadway cards Sometimes we do have a jack or a 10, but most of our cards are not king, queen, jack. Uh, those, those combos are not present, but they're more around the middling and the low cards. The three betting range here is connected primarily towards the jack and the 10. So you see a lot of ace, 10, 9, 8, or ace, jack, 9, 8, or in this case, ace, queen, 9, 8. Uh, even hands like ace, 8, 7, 5 are three betting. And then on the left hand side, you see more gaps and lower cards that are just choosing to call. So by going category through category, you have a much easier time to identify big picture patterns and learn much, much faster than if you would go hand by hand. So from there on, you can just bundle all those ace high double suited hands together and then click the train button. And now we have a narrow training we can work in and become much better at before moving on to the next narrow subject, which will be different hand classes. So in this case, ace, king, jack, deuce, double suited. This hand will be a three bet. Once again, you always want to pay attention to the EV difference to understand how close, in this case, three betting and calling is. Ace, king, five, three, we have identified the pattern of low suits and also low cards. So this hand will just call. EV difference here, relatively significant. Ace, queen, 10, four low suits quite a few gaps probably just calling and uh, but it's going to be more close only one big blind difference right there ace 10 three do certainly a low ev hand depends a lot on the rake certainly not three betting we are deciding between calling and folding i do think we can make a call depends a lot on the rake in this case it's minus 15 to call and uh, given the number we can assume that if the rake is very low or our opponent is uh, weaker we can justify making a call with this hand. This hand is too disconnected and raggy, just folding. Clearly a fold here at minus 35. A654, very well connected. We do have quite a few low cards. This is a, certainly a fringe hand between three betting and calling. You can also make that then dependent on your opponent. If you're a bit deeper, if your opponent is a bit wider, if your opponent plays very straightforward post flop, if your opponent doesn't four bet as aggressively pre, like all these reasons can gear more towards three betting. And then on the other side, if the blinds uh, are very weak, if the blinds don't squeeze a lot, or if the blinds uh, have some very weak opponents in there, then that will pull you more into the direction of calling. I think that Equilibrium in this hand probably chooses to call. 
But again, it depends also on uh, how much fold equity we have, which in GTO land is also defined by the rake structure once again. So it ends up making a call, but uh, the numbers are relatively close. Then ace jack nine three, a lot of disconnectivity and low suits. So certainly fringe between calling and folding. Uh, again, co comes down to the rake. I would say we can probably make a call. 11 big blinds 100, ace queen four deuce, double suited, certainly want to continue, but not three bet. Ace 10, nine, four can also be called, but not three bet. Ace queen 10, three belongs to this first category where we look into connected Broadway hands. We do have a two high suits and I think therefore it qualifies as a three bet, but it is then quite close. So with this exercise, we can learn a lot more about each individual category. And that brings me to what I think are sort of the most valuable categories that are oftentimes missed out on. So first of all, double suited pairs over here, three bit very, very often. So hands, for example, like five, five, four, four double suited. Let's just mark this out and filter for it for a moment. Uh, five, five, three, three, or eight, eight, five, five, nine, nine, six, six, seven, seven, five, five, like those kinds of hands. But one thing you want to pay attention to when you train and just generally speaking in poker is also how often you have a hand in your preflop hand class to begin with. So double suited pairs or double suited two pair hands are only in your preflop range 0.17% of the time. So you're not really going to contribute much to your bottom line by training and looking too much into hands you almost never have. Uh, there's more value in understanding hand class that are very large. For example, unpaired single suited hands. 51% of your hands preflop will be unpaired and single suited. So even though those hands don't three bet, those classes don't three bet very often, they're very, very large, right? So connected Broadway hands, the same structure of hands, but this time single suited, will 3-bet 24%, and they make up 2% of your preflop range. If you compare the same category double suited, it's only 0.69, right? So there's a lot to gain by understanding this category really well. And I'm just going to remove the double paired hands here at the bottom, and then filter once again. And the process is pretty much the same. Like you trying to identify patterns on the right, in this case, uh, it's a lot more single suited hands on in the middle you have trip suited hands with less connectivity and on the left you have uh, a lot of trip suited and monotone hands with a lot lot less connectivity that are just folding this is the that's kind of the first pattern uh, by filtering by ev which is the standard you can also find the hands that have the most ev by three betting but also you can use the ev difference feature and then filter for ev difference it will show you what are the most important hands to be three betting from this hand class that will leave the most money on the table by not taking the first and primary option? So for example, in our three betting range here, ace, queen, jack, 10 from this category has the biggest EV difference. So missing out on this three bet will cost you the most. And then in the middle, ace, queen, jack, deuce, single has the most EV difference in calling. So finding a three bet with this hand or a fold will cost you the most. And the same thing happens for the folding range on the left-hand side. So by sorting for EV difference, we learn much, much quicker. And that's really the goal of PLO Trainer is to shortcut your feedback mechanism so you can learn much, much faster, especially in PLO as we have so many prefab combos to work through. So now I'm going to head into the most practical part of this video. I will filter my own database for spots where we were facing a razor or a razor and a caller in position. I'm going to review hands that I had decisions with in order to improve my co-calling game in position. So to begin with, we're going to filter here for hero's position by going to this part of hold manager three. Hero can be on the button, in the cutoff or an MP. And the action we are facing is right over here, either a razor or a razor and callers. The first thing to look into is the cold call frequency. So cold call frequency are at 15.9 on the button, which is certainly on the wider spectrum if you play high rate games. But because my games usually have very low rake, this is a reasonable number to aim for. In the cutoff at 12.1, we're definitely towards the higher spectrum and the same can be said for the MP position. So I definitely want to look into some of these hands to understand my decision making better and if I potentially play too many hands in the spot. Another indicator here uh, to find easier leaks is to look at the 3-bit frequencies. And I would say my 3-bit frequency in MP and cutoff is certainly a bit on the tighter end, and uh, I want to review some hands there as well. 
And then lastly, I also look into the win rate in all the adjusted big plans per hundred. We only have about 11,000 hands that uh, I was facing a race with in these positions. So the variance and standard deviation here will be very high. But still, you can tell that the win rate here isn't that amazing, given that I only entered these pots voluntarily. So it's either a problem of when I three bet or a problem of when I cold call. So I further now go down the rabbit hole of making myself three bet. So I'm going to say PFR yes after facing a raise. And we can see when I three bet, my win rates are to the roof because when you three bet, you have a very strong range as we saw in the frequencies and we end up either winning the pot pre-flop or very often post-flop. So you can expect if I mark out these three and we look into the graph to see certainly non-showdown winnings here and to have a very positive win rate. Now on the other side, if we go into co-calling and we're going to say PFR no, but VPIP yes, so we did call, then you see that in my sample I was and not producing a win rate when co-calling on the cutoff and an MP. And this is actually quite common that when you call in these positions, it's not, not easy to produce a win rate because you have players behind you and you come in with a weaker range to begin with. Otherwise, you would three bet. So producing a win rate on the button is much more common as you have position all the time, less players behind you to re-raise. And that is why we have to be so careful when it comes to cold calling in these two positions. That, that's what I was talking about when it comes to positional awareness. I'm now going to work through these positions to figure out, is there something that I could have done better? And how can we learn from this result? So I'm going to look into uh, the last couple of hands, sorting by hands. And the first thing I want to look into is aces, right? So I'm separating the subject into different hand categories because that will make it easier for me to understand what kind of hand classes do I want to adjust and make and do something different with. So we start with aces and we can see these are all aces that I decided to call. And uh, we're going to review that right now. So here's an under the gun open and I have ace, ace, king, six. We're very deep. And I decided to make the call. And I would say this is certainly something that I do not want to do continuously forward, con uh, going forward. And that is because when you call, you allow a lot of other players behind you to also call and realize a lot more of their equity. When I three bet, I'm in position against a single player and my realizability of equity is much, much higher. At the same time, I produce fold equity preflop. So cold calling here with aces is certainly something that sometimes happens if we're at the very bottom end of our aces, but usually shouldn't happen. And we should be three betting the majority of them when we are in position. And that actually is true for all the seats behind us. The only times you want to be extra tricky, I think, is when there's a maniac at the table and his tribute frequency is extremely high. So in order to review this spot, I'm going to go back into PLO Trainer and I'm going to choose the sim that I think is the most appropriate for the games that I play in, which will be very low rake environments. And I want to go into the spot where we face an open in MP and uh, we face an early position open. So we're going to filter for aces and we review basically what the, the, the patterns are we can identify easily. So first things first, I want to filter for EV difference to see what are the hands that are must flats that lose the most by not going for a flat and then the other way around as well. And we can see here right away, rainbow disconnected aces definitely want a flat and uh, it would lose a lot of EV by going for a three bet if everyone has 100 big blinds and we're playing GTO. So that's the first takeaway. And then hands that are also going to flat that are a bit closer in EV will be trip suited disconnected aces like ace, ace, seven, deuce with three spades. Uh, ace, ace, eight, deuce is very similar. Ace, ace, nine, four, three spades. Trip aces with a six. And we can really see that your aces have to be very, very bad. The closest one in terms of EV difference that uh, flat calls at full frequency would be a hand like ace, ace, eight, three with two spades. So very disconnected, but we still have the ace high suit. And then there are some trip suited aces. And apart from that, 82% of our aces are supposed to be three betting. And uh, that is something that uh, I will adjust in my game. The next hands that come naturally up are ace high hands that are unpaired. So ace king, queen seven, ace king, queen six, ace king, ten six, all single suited are hands I decided to cold call. And we're going to start off by looking first into PLO Trainer and see if that is a thing. So Ace, King, Queen, Six, for example, single suited. And we can see we have to be very selective here, even though those hands feel like you want to call, because MP's range is so narrow. 
a lot of these hands or all of these hands, especially if the Ford card is disconnected, are going to end up folding. So if we look back at the selection here, Ace King 10 6, Ace King Queen 7 are also supposedly hands that are going to fold. Ace King Queen 7, single suited nut, is going to be a fold. We can see here, even at the lowest rake structure, and my rake structure is a little bit higher than this, we're going to have folds with these hands. The six is going to be no different. So it seems like I'm calling a bit too much with these hands. What about Ace King 9 8 with an Ace High suit? So here we have a bit more connectivity. Ace King 9 8 is also supposed to be a fold. Now we can take these folds and we can move over one seat to the cutoff where our cold call frequency will be 12.9. And we can see here some of those hands do want to call. And uh, we go back into this selection, Ace King Queen 6. Uh, with the nut suit is also going to call. So in terms of positional awareness, to me it seems like with those hands, I play MP to lose, and I should be playing cutoff like that. That's going to be one of the main takeaways with these hands. So one of the quick wins, just looking quickly through this. And then going down here, we do have uh, quite a few sort of double suited hands, like Ace Queen 6 3 and Ace Queen 5 3 double suited. I think those hands are solid calls. But we're going to double check. So Ace Queen 5 3. This will be an MP, one seat back to, or in the cutoff, one seat back to MP. Filter one more time. Those hands are definitely solid calls. So just with the singles with the hands, I need to be more careful. Then we scroll down and we can see some like Ace 753. This might be a very surprising one. This is certainly not my standard call. So probably has to do something with Villain, like maybe Villain was extremely loose in this case. We can bring up the hut here to see how much I knew about the villain at that time. Actually, we cannot see it in this particular case. I think it's not loading. But even if this player is extremely wild, would it justify calling a 753? So if we look into EV difference here, a 753 double suited. <clears throat> it's actually a pure cold call. So quite surprising for me to see that this hand does call an MP. I guess like the 753 is not really in the way and shares card with early position. And we still have that nuttiness with some connectivity, but especially the ace high suit we want. So surprisingly looser on the ace high double suited front and surprisingly tighter on the ace high single suited front. Certainly an adjustment to make. Bunch of kings here in my cold calling range. A lot of them are single suited and triple suited. So we're going to head into that next. King, king. Single suited, 59% calls, 13% three bets. We basically need an ace in order to three bet kings in MP. And then also a bunch of folds. Um, so if I look at some of the potentially weaker candidates that I decided to call, like king, king, nine, six, king, king, 10, six. Let's see if those hands actually want to call. So king, king, 10, six. Single suited. Uh, looks to be a solid call unless we have a low suit. King King 9 5 would be a fault. King King 9 6 is going to be a call. So this seems to be a quite solid. Continuously going down here. Double suited kings. King King 8 deuce. Is this a hand class that I might want to fold? Probably not. We're going to fit the four double suited kings. They're all playing with an A3 or 3 betting. So this is the process that I go through in order to really understand how am I currently playing and what can I do better to improve my win rate and my understanding of this particular spot. And you can go through the same exercise in the cutoff and of course on the button to step-by-step -step resolve all the hand categories that you are potentially playing wrong, but also investigate more around the categories. Are they potentially good three bets or expansions, extensions of your co-calling range given certain opponent types? What changes if the effective stack size is changing, which your co calling range will become much narrower? What if you go down to uh, or up to 200 big blinds? What kind of changes do we see there? But this is the step-by-step -step process that once you understood the bigger picture, it's really just about getting into the weeds and working through the hands you've played and doing a lot of training exercises that will improve your accuracy and understanding. At some point, you just got to go through the motions and do the drills and review your hands in order to reach high accuracy.
If you enjoyed this video and learned something along the way, then make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to put more educational content on this channel for free. And if you want to test out PLO Trainer for free, then head over to plomastermind.com.